Hello, everyone, and welcome to Around the World. I'm Frederica Whitfield, in forces on Malvo. And I'm Michael Holmes. Thanks for being with us. We'd like to welcome our viewers here in the U.S. and indeed around the world. Let's begin in Jordan. There, President Obama meets with King Abdullah as the president winds up his trip to the Middle East. Yeah, the two leaders are scheduled to hold a news conference. Actually, that's meant to take place pretty soon. We'll be listening in, of course, and update you on the latest developments. Now, Jordan, of course, an important strategic ally for the U.S. and partner in the region. President Obama wraps up his trip to Israel and visits another important U.S. ally in the region. He's holding a news conference this hour with Jordan's King Abdullah. Jordan is a key military and intelligence partner of the U.S., but uh, these are trying times for the kingdom. Jordan is dealing with a bad economy and a flood of refugees from nearby Syria. And we'll, of course, update you on any developments from the news conference by President Obama and King Abdullah. All right, I want to take you overseas now. We've been mentioning to you on the president's uh, three-day trip overseas. He's right now in Amman, Jordan. Let's listen in as he is sharing... Uh, uh, this press conference with King Abdullah right now, President Obama. A serious negotiation forward. Uh, we're not there yet, but uh, I'm confident that it can happen, uh, in part because it must happen. Uh, it will be good for the Israelis, and it will be good for the Palestinians. Uh, I'm very grateful for His Majesty's readiness to advance these efforts. Uh, as has been true in the past, His Majesty and Jordan will be critical uh, to making progress towards a just and lasting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, and we spent a significant amount of time consulting on Syria. Uh, I want to commend His Majesty for his leadership, and I want to commend the Jordanian people for uh, their uh, compassion uh, during an extraordinarily difficult time for their neighbors. Uh, his Majesty was the first Arab leader to publicly call on Assad to step down because of the horrific violence that was being inflicted on the Syrian people. Uh, Jordan has played a leading role in trying to begin a political transition toward a new government. We're working together to strengthen uh, a credible Syrian opposition. Uh, we share Jordan's concerns about violence spilling across the border, so uh, I want to take this opportunity to make it clear the United States is committed to the security of Jordan, uh, which is backed by our strong alliance. Uh, as has been mentioned, during this crisis, the Jordanian people have displayed uh, extraordinary generosity, but the strains uh, of so many refugees uh, inevitably uh, is showing. Every day uh, to neighbors far from home, but this is a heavy burden, and the international community needs to step up to make sure that uh, they are helping to shoulder this burden. Uh, the United States will, our, uh, will certainly do our part. Uh, we are already the single largest donor of humanitarian assistance to the Syrian people. Uh, some of this has helped people here in Jordan. And today I'm announcing that my administration will work with Congress to provide Jordan with an additional $200 million in budget support uh, this year as it cares for Syrian refugees and Jordanian communities affected by this crisis. This will mean more humanitarian assistance and basic services, including education for Syrian children uh, so far from home whose lives have been upended. Uh, and I think as parents we can only imagine uh, you know, how heartbreaking that must be for uh, any parent to, to see their children uh, having to go through the kinds of uh, uh, tumult that they're experiencing. Our cooperation on Syria is an example of how the partnership between the United States and Jordan improves the lives not only of the Jordanian people, but peoples across the region. So uh, again, Your Majesty, I want to express my great appreciation for our partnership. I want to thank you and the Jordanian people for the friendship and hospitality that they've shown me uh, and to my fellow Americans. And just as I visited the Citadel here in Amman on my last visit, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Petra tomorrow, uh, weather permitting. Uh, one of the great wonders of history uh, that the world can experience thanks to the care and dedication of Jordan and its people. So, shukran. Thank you. Thank you. Sad. Thank you, Your Majesty, Mr. President. Uh, I want to ask you, Your Majesty, for how long are you 
going to keep your borders open for the Syrian refugees. Next to you is a land of war, and anything could happen anytime. If the regime, let's say, shut the electricity or the water, you're not too far from the Damascus, from the capital. It's like less than one hour, you might find a thousand, a thousand of refugees. Not just the number that you spoke about, Your Majesty. And Mr. President, uh, thank you again. And uh, I just want to know, you are a superpower. You are leading the superpower, United States of America. You don't have a plan to put an end for what's going on in Syria, the bloodshed, the killing. And now they are talking about using the chemical weapon. What's your comment about that? Thank you, Your Majesty. Well, uh, first of all, um, uh, Saad, um, the, the problem with um, refugees comes down to a humanitarian issue. I mean, how are you going to turn back women, children, and the wounded? Um, we, this is something that we just can't do. It's not the Jordanian way. We have historically opened our arms uh, to many of our neighbors uh, through many decades of Jordan's history. Um, so that, that is a ch challenge that we just can't turn our backs on. Um, so that's the reality that we're facing uh, on, on the ground. So Jordan has always been a safe haven uh, to, to, to people around us uh, through many, many decades. Um, so unfortunately, from that point of view, refugees will continue to come to Jordan, uh, and we will con continue within our means to, to look after them as best as we can. Um, the problem is obviously the, the burden it's having on Jordan. Um, the, it, we've tried to quantify it as much as possible. The latest figures is it's going to cost us roughly $550 million uh, uh, a year. But if those figures double as we think they will by the end of the year, uh, then obviously uh, we're talking uh, a billion plus. Not only is that uh, a problem, but it's going to be a tremendous strain, uh, obviously, uh, on infrastructure, um, and it's creating social problems and security problems. Um, and so this is one of the reasons that we're, we're asking for the international community uh, to help. Uh, but physically, you can't turn away uh, young uh, children, uh, women, uh, people in desperate needs and the wounded. Um, so we will continue to burden uh, that responsibility. Since the start of the situation in Syria, we have stepped up uh, as uh, not just uh, a superpower, as you've uh, phrased it, but also because of basic humanity, uh, to say that Assad needed to go. Uh, we haven't just uh, led with words, but we've also led with deeds. As I indicated, we're the single largest humanitarian donor uh, to the Syrian people. Uh, we have worked diligently uh, in cooperation with the international community to help organize and mobilize a political opposition that is credible, because in the absence of a credible political opposition, uh, it will be impossible for us to transition to a more peaceful uh, and more representative and legitimate uh, government structure inside of Syria. Uh, and that's an area where we have uh, been involved on almost a daily basis. Uh, first, Secretary Hillary Clinton uh, helped to spearhead the efforts that formed uh, a, uh, a coherent Syrian opposition council. Uh, now you've got Secretary Kerry, who is deeply involved in that effort as well. Uh, and we are providing not just advice, not just words, but we're providing resources, training, capacity, uh, in order for that political opposition to maintain links within Syria uh, and to be able to provide direct services uh, to people inside of Syria, including uh, uh, the kinds of uh, relief efforts that uh, obviously we've, we're seeing here in Jordan, but uh, there are a whole bunch of people who are internally displaced inside of Syria who need help. Um, I think that uh, what your question may be suggesting is uh, why haven't we simply uh, gone in militarily? and you know, I think it's fair to say that um, uh, the United States uh, often finds itself in a situation where if it goes in militarily, then it's criticized for going in militarily. And if it doesn't go in militarily, then people say, why aren't you doing something militarily? Uh, and, you know, my response at this stage is to make sure that what we do contributes to bringing an end to the bloodshed as quickly as possible. Um, 
and working in a multilateral context, in an international context, be because we think our experience shows that when we lead, but we are also working with others, like the Jordanians, like the Turks, like other interested parties in the region, then the outcomes are better. Uh, when we are working with the Syrians themselves, so that this is not externally imposed, but rather something that uh, is linked directly with the aspirations and hopes of the people inside of Syria, it will work better. Uh, and you know, so we are going to continue to use every lever and, and every bit of influence that we have to affect the situation inside of Syria. Uh, you mentioned the issue of chemical weapons. We uh, have called for, and we know that the UN is now moving forward on an investigation of exactly what happened. We're monitoring the situation ourselves. Uh, I have said publicly that the use of chemical weapons by the Assad regime uh, would be a game changer from our perspective. Uh, because once you let that uh, situation spin out of control, uh, it's very hard to, uh, to stop uh, and can have enormous spillover effects uh, across the region. Uh, and so we are going to continue to closely consult with everybody in the region and do everything we can to bring an end to uh, the bloodshed and to allow the Syrian people to get out of a leader who has lost all legitimacy because he is willing to uh, slaughter his own people. Uh, and, and I'm confident that Assad will go. It's not a question of if, it's when. Uh, and so part of what we have to spend a lot of time thinking about is what's the aftermath of that? Uh, and how does that work in a way that actually serves the Syrian people? And by the way, serves the Syrian people from all walks of life, from all uh, religious uh, affiliations. Uh, because you know, one of the things that we know is happening in this region is that uh, you know, if, if, if we fail to create a model in uh, the Arab world in which uh, people can live side by side, regardless of whether they are Shuni, uh, Sunni or, or Shia or Alawite or Druze, uh, regardless of uh, the manner in which they worship their God, uh, if, if we don't uh, create that possibility, uh, then these problems are going to recur again and again and again and again. Uh, I think His Majesty understands that. I think the people of Jordan understand that. Uh, and these kinds of sectarian and tribal uh, uh, fault lines uh, are part of what uh, we have to get beyond. Uh, because they don't work in a modern world. They don't create jobs. They don't put food in the mouths of children. They don't provide an education. They don't uh, create a thriving economy. Uh, and and uh, that's going to be a central challenge, not just in Syria, but uh, across the region. And the United States, I think, has something to say about that because uh, part of what makes us a superpower is because we have people of every walk of life, every background, every religion, and if they've got a good idea and they're willing to work hard, they can succeed. And that's got to be uh, something that's more consistently spoken about, uh, not just in, with respect to the serious situation, but I think uh, with respect to this enormous moment of both promise but also danger uh, in the Arab world and in North Africa.